what is the best order to invest in legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms in late 2022 it's been a long time since i made an updated version of this guide so if this is the type of content that you enjoy make sure you like the video and subscribe we're getting so close to 40,000 subscribers which is actually mind-blowing so thank you guys so much now i just want to say at the beginning of the video the speed with which you invest in legendary commanders as a free-to-play player is going to be relatively slow and it's going to vary a ton based on how active you are in the game if you join a jumper group right at the beginning and you immediately have like three or four farms you're doing every single event you're participating in Ark of Osiris in Karak ceremony if you're doing the Tempest clash if that still comes around and the champions of Olympia for the few gold heads that that gives you all these things is going to give you a huge advantage over a player who maybe doesn't have a farm and they don't log in every day and they don't gather gems on their main account to use towards the more than gems to focus on VIP 10. So realistically, I want you guys to expect that expertising a legendary commander will take anywhere from four to eight months. That's for a single expertise. And I know that that's a big range, but that's because the activity level of free to play players also has a big range. So just expect that going in. And the reason I tell you that is because that's going to affect the order that you invest in commanders. For example, Alexander might be somebody that you actually start to consider skipping these days if your expertise in commanders relatively slowly. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Don't worry, Alexander is still incredible, but there's just a little bit of nuance to it at this point. Of course, we have our trusty tier maker here to make this a lot easier to understand. And the first commander we have to talk about is Richard the first. Richard is the first commander that shows up on the Wheel of Fortune. And while his glory days are long gone, he is still absolutely a commander that you want to at least summon likely you'll want to bring him to five one 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 but you also can probably expect to bring him to five five one one the earlier you can bring him to five five one one the more you're going to get value out of that and he may actually be pretty good for your first and second kbk but if you want to see the most amount of sculptures possible then five one 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 is probably where you want to leave him and the reason for this is because even though he's not great with pvp he does help you chain barbarians in the open fields pretty Pretty much indefinitely his tankiness and healing factor is unique to Richard the first and because you get access to him so early there just really isn't a great replacement for him if you want to get good value chaining barbarians which if you're free to play that's where a lot of your value is going to come from but with that being said let's move on to Yi Song Ye Yi Song Ye also lands into one of the first investments you're going to make in the game and he's also going to be the first commander that you expertise in Rise of Kingdoms now we can argue about whether or not Yi Song Ye is power crept out in season of conquest right we have Boudicca Prime we have Nebu but realistically the thing that about Yi Song is that a he comes around so early and it's just it's impossible to get this much value out of a commander in rise of kingdoms with any other investment they're just you can't have that much longevity out of pretty much anyone else Alexander is a close second but Yi Song Ye comes around even sooner than him you can use him with pretty much anybody you don't have to use him with an archer you can use him with Richard for chaining you can use him with Alexander Alexander for PVP and even in season of conquest you can slap him behind Nebu or Boudicca and have a very powerful archer March for a free to play player so you don't have to second guess this expertising Yi Song Ye is still the right play especially in the early game if you're already in season of conquest and you have a ton of sculptures saved up and you missed Yi Song you don't even have him summoned then maybe you can consider skipping him to go for like Boudicca Nebu but realistically like everyone should have a e song he, it's, he's just very very good on top of that he gets a relic in season of conquest that gives you even more archer stats with even more skill damage which is just crazy next we have to talk about Alexander the Great he comes around a little bit later than the other commanders we've talked about but it is during season two of kvk which is still very early on in the game and his usability and effectiveness is undeniable he is extremely good for a very long time however I think you may want to skip Alexander the Great if you are hoarding sculptures at a very slow rate what do I mean by this if you can't expertise Alexander by like midway through season three of KBK then you probably want to just save those sculptures for season of conquest and the reason that I say this is because you're going to get access to Scipio and Scipio is essentially uh a better version of Alexander the Great I mean he has an exceptional AoE here that rivals Guan Yu's plus he has even more stats than Guan Yu it's just absolutely ridiculous the amount of value you get from Scipio and if you don't believe me 
just look at Scipio's skills at one 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 like it's 1500 damage factor three target aoe with a 10 percent health reduction 20 percent of infantry attack with march speed you have 10 percent infantry health you also reduce skill damage taken by 10 percent with a damage factor every point put into Scipio skills is the most valuable point you could put into anybody's skills he's exceptionally good i think this is the best commander in the game right now especially for free to play players so again if you are hoarding your sculptures very very slowly which by the way i just want to say you know let's say you get vip 10 and you're gaining one sculpture per day you shouldn't be taking that sculpture and investing it that day you want to save them you want to save as many universal sculptures as you can look at what i have right here 942 is there commanders i could be working on right now absolutely but do i need to no why is that because new commanders are coming into the game they always are no matter what no matter when you're watching this there's probably a new commander coming within the next couple of weeks or months or whatever so you want to save until you hit that 690 point and then make the value judgment and say okay how close am i to season of conquest am i still you know a couple a month or two away well then great you can invest in alexander use him for a part of season three of kvk or whatever the case might be and then have him for season of conquest ready to go and start to save for Scipio, which is uh, at this point should be no surprise the next investment we're going to talk about here in the video but if you're nowhere close to expertising alexander before season of conquest you might as well skip him i mean you just have a better option because when you think about free-to-play players they're realistically only going to use like two maybe three marches in the open field when pvping right and so if you look at the late game if they do eventually get and this is a little bit of spoilers but if they do eventually get like Guan Yu with Scipio for example their Alexander is just going to be sitting there doing pretty much nothing until they get someone to pair him with like Harold or if there's a better infantry commander later down the line so in the event that you know you you are going to be able to get Scipio soon just save for Scipio he's just better now one last thing that I have to mention about Alexander and this is a little bit more nuanced but this is even more of a reason to invest in him so if you were looking for that reason here it is we will probably get a museum relic for alexander the great at some point in the future i don't know when these museum buffs are coming but i can't imagine that they won't implement season two commanders into the museum i would be shocked if they didn't and because alexander is already so great no pun intended any small buff that he gets is is just exceptional it's just he 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 barely even needs a buff in season of conquest so the fact that he could be getting one at some point is just crazy so keep that in mind eventually alex may be even better than he already is right now so if you do have him you will never regret investing in him i promise now this should come at no surprise but your next investment is going to be Scipio. okay Scipio is the first season of conquest commander that I recommend investing in as a free to play player. You may be saying Omniarch, what about Guan Yu? Should I get Guan Yu or Scipio? And I just made an entire video about that on the channel. So if you missed that, go ahead and check it out. But there's really not much I can say about Scipio other than point for point. He's just the best investment I think you can make as a free to play player right now. Not only is he an infantry commander, which I think is the best unit to focus on for infantry. There's multiple reasons why I feel that way. But one training infantry requires food and wood which is typically the most abundant uh, resource that you can get also the infantry epic gear gives you bonus damage to barbarians in three of its different pieces and you are going to be doing a ton of barbing in the open field so having that bonus damage especially in season of conquest is going to be really nice plus the fact that alex and richard are such early game commanders that are at least relevant later down the line maybe richard not so much but they're just they're they're infantry so you can start to focus on infantry earlier than you can focus on any other troop type and start to build that value basically from day one so again Scipio is exceptional if you did get Alexander then boom and now you have Scipio primary Alexander secondary and that is an insanely good March to have in season of conquest if you skipped Alexander you can do Scipio primary with Isongye secondary if you want to do just a glass cannon maximum damage you could also obviously do Richard as a secondary to add some more tankiness you could also add somebody like Charles Martel if you got really lucky and got him to five five one one by that point or even better you could do somebody like Mehmed five five one one who also has a very good relic by the way so if you got lucky with Mehmed's uh summons from the gold keys then obviously Scipio primary five five one one Mehmed secondary is insanely good for free to play now the reason we haven't talked too much about gold key commanders so far in the video is because again these are it's RNG like however many sculptures you have have of them 
I will never know, but I will say after about a year, you should have uh, the good ones at 5511. Hopefully, again, that really comes down to how active you are. If you're doing all the events that give you gold keys and things like that, and of course, a little bit of luck. But for now, we'll sort of just ignore them because I can't guarantee you'll have them at a usable level, and you absolutely should never use a universal on a gold key commander never put a universal sculpture into charles martel or even mehmed right just just don't do it moving forward i'm going to assume that you got alexander and now you have Scipio. okay i'm going to make that assumption that this is a pair that you do have at this point so who should you invest in after Scipio, right well some of you may assume that a archer would be your next investment because you have one of the best archers already so you might as well make an exceptionally good pair out of that and honestly that is a very solid route however the only exception to that is you know how much gear do you have on your account if this is what your infantry gear looks like should you all of a sudden drop your infantry gear progress and start focusing on archer gear for example i know that archers have the revival set which is a very very good epic set to get but even still in season of conquest epics just it's really hard to make a full epic set cut it in season of conquest so if you maybe got really lucky with your crafts for infantry commanders and let's say you talented your hope cloak on the first drop which I've done twice now which is insane then maybe you can think about replacing the helmet on infantry and moving on to somebody like Boudica okay and again that's very very situational this moving on to Boudica after Scipio really depends on again how good of a position you're in with your PvP gear how many gold pieces do you have how many talented pieces do you have if you got really lucky then great maybe you can move on to Boudica so now you can do these two marches in the open field and boom you are golden this is an exceptionally good two army pair very high damage output tons of value here we love to see it now if your gear is struggling then you probably don't want to shift gears away to archers just yet again as a free-to-play player you want to focus on making one march super good and then moving on to something else so if you have mostly purple gear for infantry do you want to have a, a second pair with mostly purple gear for archers and then both of them get swarmed down if your gear isn't ready for archers yet i would say put Boudica on a back burner for now and consider investing in and you may have guessed it guan yu now this at this point if you're starting your account today this could change by the time you get to you know once you have these four in the point you want them at guan yu could be power crept out of the game we never know what lilith is up to right the next infantry commanders could be insane but assuming they're not then i think guan yu would be an exceptional investment order if you're still working on your infantry equipment and getting an all golden or close to all golden set realistically i would say this is a decent place to switch gears you really want to get rid of the helmet and the chest for infantry at a minimum the legs and the weapon you pretty much will never have to uh swap out and the boots and gloves are sort of micro optimizations you can sort of ignore accessories for right now i'm not saying that they're pointless but i'm saying that this video is just an investment order we're not really getting too deep into gear but again if you're still focusing on fine-tuning that infantry set then you probably want a really solid infantry pair to go with it and guan yu Scipio is the best open field pair in the game in my opinion right now that could change but right now they both have insane aoe skill damage they both are infantry they both give you a, a ton of attack and just point for point i think this is the best value you can get out of two expertise commanders now it's also worth noting that you could try to do a 5155 guan yu and that would be super good value like insanely good value I, I mean at least just getting the 5111 guan yu for the aoe skill damage to pair with cpo would be exceptionally good here if you go this route obviously you won't have Boudica, but you could do something like alex ysg not a great pair in season of conquest but it's just a way that you can get your ysg in the open field right if you have ysg you want to have him in in the murder murder ball right you want that skill damage you want that aoe as best as you can use it and this would be your your pair right here it should also be worth noting that if you skipped alexander earlier then you can continue to skip him for guan yu right guan yu Scipio is is like that's what you want now remembering that uh richard is not expertise and the chance of guan being five one five five is slim but it's possible what you're looking at here is probably about a year okay and that's if you are hyper active if you have four farms if you are gathering tons of gems you're playing every single day you're constantly sending out gem gatherers and you're very active 
all the time. And I mean that all the time. You have to be active all the time if you want to accomplish something like this in one year. A lot of you probably don't even think this is possible in one year. I can assure you that it is but the the people that that can accomplish this in one year uh are very few and far between i mean you have to be addicted to rise of kingdoms and you have to know exactly what you're doing from day one in order to accomplish this within one year now this is the part where it's hard to say right i think the next play would be Boudica, right because again you just you want that isong a in the open field you just want him there okay and again at this point you're probably about a year in and if that's the case we can start to talk about uh charles martel and we could start to talk about mehmed right and you also want to keep in mind you'll have ethel fled here as well she's free you'll have her expertise these three are going to be the ones that you look to when you try to get your alexander out on the field right doing uh martel alex is an option doing guan alex scipio met med with Boudica ysg is also an option again that's assuming that you have these two at five five one one at one year in will you guaranteed no again it's rng so you could be really unlucky or you could be very inactive but that's just to answer your question as to what would i do with my alex if i go for my Boudica that that's your answer again that's especially true if Alex has a relic by the time you get to this point now I know what you're thinking right you're thinking about Nevsky you're saying Omniarch Nevsky like obviously Nevsky right Nevsky is like so insane and he is right he is and I'm not even making the argument that Boudica is better than Nevsky because honestly I, I don't know I think they're both exceptionally good um you may be able to make the case that Nevsky is better I, I think that that's completely possible but we have to again approach this from a usability perspective and being realistic with what free-to-play players are going to have at this point if they go into Nevsky before they go into Boudica then what wh like what's the pair here what's the play is it Nevsky Mehmed I mean maybe Nevsky Ethel fled I mean I I've seen it done it's it's fine people used to use salad and uh, ethel fled all the time people still do that in fact there's some plays you can make here with going Nevsky over Boudica but realistically Boudica just has a shoehorn like boom one of the best archer pairs you can have in the in in the game in, for open field right like just no brainer like it, it, it's it's just I think realistically you're going to get more value out of this March sooner than you're going to get value out of your Nevsky March. So again, I'm not saying Boudicca is better than Nevsky. I just think realistically, you, you know, you'll, you'll probably be able to use this pair sooner than you'll be able to have an effective equivalent Nevsky March. But this is where things start to get a little bit blurry, right? Because we're looking a year and three months, a year and four months in at this point, right? Like assuming that you've done all of this, like that's, that's what we're looking at here. So at that point, like I already know that there's going to be new commanders in the game that are probably going to power creep even some of this stuff out right so that's where you know if you start today I really can't guide you uh on that on that front right um, I'm thinking a year and three months from now we'll almost certainly have a relic for Alexander so like you probably want to pair with him if you want to continue going mostly in on infantry with just having this one great archer March then I would say Harold is probably your next best investment because you can do a Harold with Alex and this is a very high damage March um I still use Harold with Alex in season of conquest Harold is a little bit squishy and so is Alex so this is sort of hard to focus on for free to play players but it is extremely high damage single target damage aoe if you're swarmed it also has instant proc damage on both of them the rage regeneration on herald is insane and what's even better is that you could do a herald primary with a martel secondary and hopefully at this point if you're a year and a half or uh, you know a year and three quarters in uh hopefully your martel will be five five one something right and i think that a martel herald is looked down upon by a lot of mid to low spenders who've been playing for a long time but realistically like this is a it's a good march it's a good march is it the best march no but for free to play players you again you have to put this into context like who are we talking about here martel with the relic is tanky he's sort of like the poor man's pakal when you pair him with herald he tries to make up as best he can for herald's lack of defense and I think that realistically I as a player who's spent thousands of dollars in this game can tell you that I do think that Harold Martel even for me is a solid pair now is that because I have you know just better gear than a free-to-play player on my Herald like sure that's maybe part of it but this gear isn't insane right like this isn't like something ridiculous obviously I got lucky with the hope cloak but yeah again doing a Herald uh Alex with a Harold Martel that's absolutely uh something that you could be looking at at that point if again you want to keep going in on infantry and making sure that you have a quality pair for your Alex and you're not just 
throwing him in with a Mehmed or you know with a Martel or an Ethel Fled or something like that but I can't stress this enough like by the time you get to this point if you start today Harold might be power crept out okay or maybe maybe even Alex so just keep that in mind once you get to this point um again I think gear is going to really be the limiting factor even a year and a half in uh it, it's it just takes such a long time for free-to-play players to get their hands on quality blueprints and also it comes down to RNG of the crafting system and all that stuff but at this point I would say that let's assume that none of these commanders are power crept out and you were able to get this far then you probably want to look at Nevsky okay uh, I mean he's just so good he's insane and the fact that we're talking about him so late in this video really sucks because he is so exceptionally good and like look you could start to focus on Nevsky earlier if you wanted to do something like again getting lucky with Guan and doing five one five five Guan great you just saved 300 sculptures right there if you want to do a five 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 one Scipio great you just saved 300 sculptures there if you want to do a five 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 one Boudica great you just saved 300 sculptures there and boom you can expertise uh you know Nevsky earlier if you want but again the reason that uh you know I'm talking about expertise is because you're you're while you might be able to get these commanders a little bit sooner uh with a small sacrifice in skill points um I, again I think gear is also going to be um a, a bottleneck here right so do you have the equipment to diversify into cavalry at this point if you do then great go for the 5155 guan maybe go for the 5551 Boudica, right and and maybe go for Nevsky a little bit earlier and the reason for that is because uh, Nevsky is exceptional he's so good man he's just here I, I actually got to change this I think that's a little bit more accurate here um he's he's just exceptionally good and pretty much everybody that you can pair him with is a value build what do I mean by that well you could easily do a, a Nevsky with a William and William is I mean he's renowned for being one of the best five 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 one pairs in the game because this last uh, skill gives you a ton of value at just a single point and you don't really need the expertise for him to be effective he also gives AoE to Nevsky which he really does need rage regeneration a lot to love about uh William you also if you picked up Saladin somehow in the early game maybe by getting super lucky with winning a mightiest governor or something like that um then you might have a five 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 one Saladin uh in season of conquest and great news you could do a Nevsky with Saladin there's no AoE here but your March will do pretty well for itself uh which is I mean as a free-to-play player that's kind of the best that you can focus on is just not filling your hospital right so a Nevsky Saladin would be solid the only uh commander that isn't a value build that you could pair with with uh Nevsky and again that's at the time of recording this is Attila which is right here you pretty much need to expertise Attila right Attila primary Nevsky secondary that I wouldn't really recommend for free to play players unless you've been playing the game already for years and you have a ton of sculptures saved then maybe you could make that argument if you're looking for just straight up kill points but realistically you would be looking at something like this now let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit for you your primary March that you should focus all of your best gear onto is going to be Guan Scipio that's just that's the gold standard that's what you want to be aiming for from like the day that you create your account pretty much if you're extremely efficient and you want to go more all in on infantry then go for the Herald with your Alex that you already grabbed back in season three of KBK if you missed Alex you don't have him you went straight to Scipio then I would say skip Herald and you could ignore this line at that point you probably just want to go straight to Boudica with YSG that gets your YSG on the field with an exceptional pairing and then after that you probably want to go Nevsky and focus on one of the better pairs for for him in either Saladin or William I think William's better than Saladin but you know you might have Saladin and again Saladin just like Alexander might get some sort of relic buff right if Saladin gets 20 percent uh, cavalry health like oh my god game changer like that's insane but again that's all speculation uh at this point you're probably looking at like two years worth of investments again if you're hyper fast maybe it's a year and a half maybe if you get lucky with your Guan 5155 etc there's a lot of ways that you can achieve um four marches very good here uh, but again I think again gear is going to be a bottleneck for you so keep that in mind anything past this point is all speculation right because two years from now there's going to be even more power creep there's going to be even more commanders even more options and it's just not really going to be relevant I think for a lot of you watching who are just starting today so I don't want to start talking about you know who your fifth March is going to be because realistically free to play players again are only going to use two to three marches anyway uh and if you are hyper efficient and you have four 
then at this point just start saving for whatever's coming basically with that being said if you want me to make a video talking about all the ways that you can get as many sculptures as possible comment down below I'd love to hear from you guys if this video was useful informative or entertaining for you drop a thumbs up it only takes a second and it helps this video a ton it helps push it into the algorithm we're super close to 40,000 subscribers so please go ahead and click that button like 70% of you guys or 80% are not subscribed so just click it real quick it won't affect you in any negative way I promise and if you change your mind you can unsub later with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace